everybody, it's Miss Jamie with Play to Learn Preschool. I'm so glad that you're here today to join me for another episode of Virtual Preschool. While we wait for all of the friends to join us and find us, let's sing Everybody Clap with our friend, Miss Nancy. Here it goes. This is Everybody Clap from the Seasons. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. And everybody stomp your feet, stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Everybody stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Everybody stomp your feet, stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Everybody stomp your feet, stomp your feet, stomp your feet. And everybody go peek-a-boo. Everybody go peek-a-boo. Everybody go peek-a-boo. Everybody go peek-a-boo. And everybody go side to side. 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 And everybody go one, two, three. Woo! Go one, two, three. Woo! Go one, two, three. Woo! Go one, two, three, woo! And clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands, everybody clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands, everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. I love singing with you every morning and I'm so glad that you're here. If you're listening, will you leave me a message so I know your name and where you're listening from? And while you're doing that, I think we should wake up Betsy. She's taking a nap behind the board. But if I count to three and you call for her, I know she'll come out. Ready? One, two, three. Say, Betsy, where are you? Good job calling. Here she comes. Hello, boys and girls. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to sing hello to you, and then maybe you can sing hello to us. Does that sound good? Hello, friends. How are you? Can you sing hello, Betsy? Hello, Betsy. How are you? And will you sing hello, Miss Jamie? Hello, Miss Jamie, how are you? We're so glad to see you. Here, here, we're all here. Here, here, we're all here. Here, here, we're all here. We're all here together. Yay! We're so happy to see you. All week this week, we're talking about animals. Yesterday, we talked about the animals that you might see on the savanna. Do you remember the names of any of those animals? Elephants, giraffes, and lions, and hippos. Yes, those were animals that you could see on the savanna. Today, we're learning about a new habitat. Betsy, I'm going to lay you down so I can talk to the boys and girls, but we'll get her back out again at the end, okay? See you soon. The habitat is the name of the place where animals and plants live. Can you say that big word, habitat? Habitat, yes, that's a smart word if you can remember that. Ooh, your brain is getting smart. Habitat is the word for where they live. Yesterday's habitat was all grass with just a tree or two, but today's habitat is called the jungle. Can you say jungle? 
Yes, and look at this picture of the habitat. What do you see in the jungle? Does it have big flat grass like yesterday? No, this jungle has lots of trees, lots of grass. It's wet and mossy and lots of neat animals live here. Let's look at some of the animals we might find in the jungle. Does that sound good? Do you know what you might see in a jungle habitat? Hmm, can you think of any that would live in these tall trees? Maybe this one. It's so colorful. This is a macaw parrot. Can you say macaw? Yeah, a macaw parrot would live way up in the trees in a jungle habitat. What else would we find in a jungle habitat? This guy likes the trees too. This is a squirrel monkey and the squirrel monkey would like to climb up in the trees and swing back and forth on those vines, don't you think? Lots of monkeys live in the jungle. Here's a big, fast animal. You're right, a frog might live in a jungle. You're right, Addie. You're right, look at this one. Ooh, he's fast. He would not live up in the trees. This one would live down on the forest floor. This one is a jaguar. Yes, I heard you say that. The jaguar lives in the jungle. He likes all of that wet rainforest land. Yes, the jaguar lives in the jungle. Wow, you know a lot about animal habitats. Look at this guy. I would not want to run into this one in the jungle. Do you see it? This is a snake, a big snake. This kind of snake is called an anaconda. I'm not a huge fan of snakes. And this one looks really big. This is a green anaconda. And he would definitely love to be on the jungle floor and maybe even up in the jungle trees. The anaconda could climb up or be down on the floor. And I heard lots of people say this animal when I asked you what might live in the jungle habitat. Lots of you said this one. This is a little tree frog. This kind of frog's name is a poison dart frog. Where do you think the poison dart frog would like to live in the jungle? Would it live down on the forest floor or up in the trees or both? What do you think? I think both too, you're right. And here's another one that has a silly name. You might not even know this one. This one is not very familiar. Do you see him? He almost looks like a pig or an anteater with his pointy nose. This is called a taper. Isn't that a silly jungle animal? The taper lives on the forest floor in this wet rainforest looking for bugs to eat. Do you see the taper? Those are just a few of the animals that we might find in a jungle habitat. I also have this book by World Book Encyclopedia all about rainforest animals. And I wanted to show you two pictures from this book. This picture is a very silly animal that you might find in the rainforest. Do you know which kind of animal this is? that hangs upside down and sleeps all day. Do you know? This animal is so slow that sometimes moss grows on its back because it's so tiny and or so slow, not tiny, it's big, slow and sleepy. This is called a sloth. Can you say it? Sloth. This is a drawing of a sloth, and if you look right here, you can see a real photograph of a sloth. This picture says that the sloth can sleep for up to 18 hours a day. They don't eat very much or move very fast, 
They're very sleepy. The sloth loves the rainforest and the jungle trees. And here's another picture that I wanted to show you. This picture shows all the animals you might find up in the jungle trees. Do you see the ones we talked about? Do you see the macaw? Uh huh. And the monkeys? And the sloth? Yep. And there are lots of other birds and insects. And the plants in the, in the jungle, in the rainforest, grow some really important foods that we like to eat, like chocolate and vanilla, and your parents might like coffee too. That all grows in the rainforest. I have a silly song poem for us to do today about rainforest animals. Let's see if you can tell me what these are. It's a little monkey. We're going to count how many monkeys I can put on my hand. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, and these monkeys are going to swing in the tree. Do you think you could say that? And I have a little surprise for us too. Ready? Five little monkeys swinging in the tree. Ooh, come on, Miss Jeannie. There we go. Five little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator. Say, can't catch me. La, 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 la. Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, and snaps that monkey right out of that tree. He's having a snack. There were five monkeys, and the alligator snapped one. Now how many are left? Four. Good. Can you say it with me? Four little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator. Alligator can't catch me. <laughs> Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, and snaps that monkey right out of that tree. There were five, and the alligator snapped two away. How many are left? Three. Good. Can you say it? Three little monkeys swinging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Alligator, can't catch me. <laughs> Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, and snaps that monkey right out of that tree. There were five, and the alligator snapped one, two, three away. How many are left? Yes, two. Can you say it? Two little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, can't catch me. Oh, they're teasing him. Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, and snaps that monkey right out of that tree. We had five to start, and the alligator snapped five of them away. How many, snapped four of them away. How many are left? Just one little monkey. Can you say it? One little monkey swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, and snaps that monkey right out of that tree. Now, he ate, or he didn't eat, he snapped them out. They just fell out, we'll say. There were five and he snapped all five. Now there's no more monkeys swinging in the tree. And old Mr. Alligator's happy as can be. Hi, friends. Isn't he a cute alligator? He's so big, he goes down my whole arm. Look at that. Hi, everyone. Are there alligators in the rainforest? probably in crocodiles too, right down on the rainforest floor in the rivers. We are going to play a little game with a cheeky monkey today. Do you see this cheeky monkey? Look how cute he is. 
He's going to climb up the coconut tree in the rainforest jungle. And I have lots of coconut trees. They all have a different number of coconuts. This one has one. Do you see the number one? One. And this one has two. Good job with your numbers. And this one has three. Good. And the next one has four. Well done. And this one has five. Good job. And this one has six. Good. And we have seven. Can you see that? And eight. Well done. I'll tip it down just a little bit so you can see all eight trees. We're going to say a poem that goes like this. Cheeky little monkey climbed up in the tree. How many coconuts did he see? Which tree did the monkey climb up? How many coconuts did he see at the top of his tree? Can you tell me which number you guess? Say it really loud so I can hear you all the way here in Virginia. Oh, there are lots of boys and girls shouting out their numbers. I hear you all. We can start with number two. Lots of friends said two coconuts. Let's check the number two. Nope, two is a good guess. But there's no monkey in that tree. Where could the monkey be? Beckett, I hear you. Easton, Em, I hear you. Where is the monkey? Nora, I hear you. And Wyatt and August, let's see. Do you think he's in number four? I hear you, Walter. We can try number four. Let's see. <gasps> nope, but four was a good guess. Where could that cheeky little monkey be? Maddie thinks number one. Let's look and see behind number one. Nope, but one was a good guess too. Hmm, where is he? Max, I hear you. And Owen and Gwen, you think number five? Addison, I hear you. Let's see. <gasps> yes, you found the monkey. He was climbing up the tree with five coconuts. Good job guessing. Let's turn them back over. There's the four, and the two, and the one. Should we hide our cheeky little monkey again? Okay, you have to say the poem while I hide it, okay? Cheeky little monkey climbed up in the tree. How many coconuts did he see? Where's our cheeky little monkey this time? Ellie and Luke both say five. We can try five. That's where he was last time. Maybe he's in the same spot. No, but that was a wonderful guess. He wasn't in number five. I like how you're saying your numbers. Well done. Let's see. I hear you. Hazel, I hear you. And Juliet and Hunter and Reed. I hear you, Maya. You think number seven. Let's look and see. You found him on only the second guess. He was hiding in the coconut tree number seven. Good, you found the cheeky little monkey very quickly. I think we'll have time to play one more. Will you say the poem with me while I hide it? Okay, here goes. Cheeky little monkey climbed up in the tree. How many coconuts did he see? Where could that cheeky little monkey be hiding? I hear you, Oliver and Evan. Oliver thinks number one. Let's look, Oliver, and see. No, but number one was a really good guess. You were right too, Sydney. Not on the number one. Where's the cheeky little monkey? Emerson thinks number six. Emerson, we could try six. Let's look. No, but six was a good guess, too. He wasn't hiding with the six coconuts. 
Where is that cheeky little monkey? Oh, lots of friends are shouting. I have to just pick one though. Those are such good guesses. Oh, I hear you. Lilu thinks number two. Let's look and see. No, but that was a good guess. It wasn't number two this time. Where could the cheeky little monkey be? I hear you, Cooper and Harper, and Caleb thinks number three. Let's try number three. <gasps> Caleb, you found him. He was hiding behind the coconut tree that has three coconuts. Well done. I love the way you guys like to play that game. I'm so proud of you for saying your numbers and guessing and waiting your turn because I know it's hard when lots of kids are calling out. I have an art project for you that I'd like you to try at home and it's a fun one. You get to pretend and paint. In this art project, all you need to complete it is a piece of paper and a little bit of paint and some string. You could use a piece of yarn or maybe you have another kind of string. Any kind of string will do. And we are going to pretend like this string is an anaconda snake from the jungle. And what we're gonna do is dip our string into the paint. Sometimes if your paint is really wet, it will just fall in. My paint is really thick, so I'm going to use a stick to stir it up and get lots of paint on my snake string. And then when I take it out, my snake is all, oh, that's a really long snake. It's all covered with paint, so I'm going to lay it down on the paper and make it go like a snake in the jungle. Do you see that? We can paint with string and pretend like it's a snake. He's slithering across the jungle floor. Yes. Do you think you could paint with a snake? Pretend like the string is the snake and make it go all over the jungle floor on your paper. Maybe you could use more than one color. I only put green paint on my art project, but maybe you could have another string with another color of paint and paint with a string. I would love to see the art that you create. Maybe your grown up could take a picture and send it to me. Would you like to read a funny little book about some animals at the zoo? I'm going to turn these around so that it's not too distracting while I read the book and move my cheeky little monkey over there. Okay, this book is called Never Ever Shout in a Zoo. When you go to the zoo, you can see animals that live in lots of different habitats. You might see savanna animals or jungle animals maybe even farm animals or forest animals. And in this story, the little girl is walking through the zoo and something terrible happens. She drops her ice cream cone. And when she does, she shouts. Can you imagine what's gonna happen when she shouts at the zoo? Uh-oh. It's going to be wild. Let's read this book called Never Ever Shout in a Zoo. It's by Karma Wilson. You might recognize this author because she writes all of our favorite bear books, like Bear Feels Sick. Yep. Okay. Never Ever Shout in a Zoo. And here's the zoo sign. It says zoo, and you can go this way for the bears or the lions or the seals. Do you see the sign is showing which way to visit the animals and the elephants and the monkeys? And there's the little girl walking with her ice cream cone right up to the step and watch what happens. She trips and it drops. Wait, but she's upset. What do you do when that happens to you? Oh, look, she shouts and she has tears. She's crying. Never, ever shout in a zoo because if you do, anything might happen. 
And don't say I didn't warn you. If you shout in a zoo, you might scare a bear, a giant bear, a giant grouchy bear, a giant grouchy grizzly bear that weighs 2,023 pounds. Uh oh. And if you scare that bear, he just might charge a large charge, a large barge of charge, right through the bars of its cage. Uh-oh, don't say I didn't warn you. Oh no, he broke out. And if that bear gets loose, he might charge past a moose, a big moose, a big bull moose, a big bull moose with a bad attitude. Uh-oh, what is the moose gonna do? That moose sees a bear running loose, he might get an idea, a dreadful idea, a dreadful, disastrous idea that he should be free like that bear. Uh-oh, don't say I didn't warn you. She's running, isn't she? And if the moose escapes, he might trot by the apes, all those apes, all those clever apes all those clever, conniving apes that love to play practical jokes. And if those apes should happen to spy the moose and the bear as they clatter on by, they might come up with a plan, a malicious plan, a malicious, mischievous plan to break out like the moose and the bear and set animals loose everywhere. Uh-oh. Don't say I didn't warn you. And if those apes should do as they please, they'd probably steal the zookeeper's keys. They'd let out the hippos. They'd unleash the lions. They'd set free the tigers and the kangaroos, the snakes, the flamingos, the crocodiles, and every single beast in the zoo. Uh-oh, don't say I didn't warn you. This is the same illustration that's on the cover. Can you see that? They're all running loose. All those creatures would scatter about, all because of a shout. One shout, one innocent little shout, one innocent little shout that started this whole mess. You see her in the middle? She feels sorry that she yelled about her ice cream. <laughs> and all those animals running wild might lock up each man and woman and child in the zoo, including you. Look, they're being so silly. They dropped her into the zoo cage with the zookeeper. This is a silly book. I warned you, you can't say I didn't. Do you see them all in there? That's sort of backwards, isn't it? And there you would be in a pen. Then, what would you do to get out? You'd probably shout. But haven't I warned you? Never, ever shout in a zoo. And this silly book ends kind of like that duck book where there's a picture that gives a clue about what might happen next. And there she is shouting at the museum. And it says, New exhibit, dinosaur frozen in ice from the Arctic. What do you see happening? When she shouted again, the dinosaur broke out of the ice. Do you think this book is a real book about things that really happen? Or is it just a fiction story? What do you think? Could this really happen? No, it's just a fiction, just a funny story. The book that I showed you at the beginning, these are true facts about real animals, things that really happen. Because remember I showed you it has real pictures of the sloth. This is a real true fact book. But this book is just pretend. This one is called Fiction, Just Pretend. Boys and girls, our lesson is over now. And it's time for us to call Betsy back so that we can sing goodbye. On the count of three, will you say, 
Betsy, come back. Ready? One, two, three. Betsy, come back. Hello, friends. Did you like learning about all the animals in the jungle? Mm-hmm, me too. Now it's time for us to sing goodbye. Will you help me sing goodbye to Betsy and to all of our friends? Let's do it together. Preschool time is over now, over now, over now. Preschool time is over now for another day. Wave goodbye to all of our friends, all of our friends, all of our friends. Wave goodbye to all of our friends. It's time to stay home and play. Hip, hip, hooray! Good singing. Do you have any bird seed to feed Betsy today? Okay, reach down in your pocket while you're getting it out. May I talk to the grown-ups for a minute? Grown-ups, up in the video description, there is an enrichment play pack. This play pack has six ideas that you can choose to do at home to extend the learning with your little one after the video is over. It also has four printable pages so that your little one, usually ages four, five, six years old, that's usually a good age to do these pages, can practice writing their name. They can practice tracing and increasing their fine motor skills, working on letters and numbers and more. These are available for free for you to print up in the video description. Do you have any bird seed for Betsy? She sure hopes so. That's her favorite part of the day. Get a handful. Ready? One, two, three. Throw it here. Yum. Yum. <gasps> Thank you, friends. And Betsy would like to throw you a kiss. Hold out your hand if you'd like to catch it. Here goes. Catch it. Stick it to your cheek. Pull a little glue so it doesn't fall off all day and give yourself a big hug from Miss Jamie and Betsy. We're proud of you and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye friends. Bye bye.